and we're going to start out by cloning a piece of DNA by restriction analysis into one of these cloning vectors. Now I, this screen shows you the nucleotide database for the National Center for Biotechnology Information and I have uh, typed in the pjx 6 p cloning vector because I want to get this particular vector. Uh, as you can see there are three of them, pjx 6 p one which is shown down here on the bottom, pjx 6 p two and then on the top pjx 6 p three uh, we're going to probably end up using all three of those, or at least a couple of them, in the exercise today. They are exactly the same. They make the same protein, but they are shifted one nucleotide apart from each other as far as the cloning site. And I'll point that out to you as we go through this exercise. So the first thing I want to do is go to Neb Cutter. And um, if you noticed, I the... Um, PJX vector system, each one of them has an accession number. And so PJX 6P1 has the accession number U78872. And so I put it in here into the GenBank number so we can cut this piece of DNA. Just briefly as a word of caution, if you put it down here, in, it won't work. Uh, if you wanted to copy and paste the entire browser or the entire sequence, you could do that here. So I'm going to delete that. So now we're up here where it says GenBank number. It's a circular piece of DNA. Uh, not that this matters a whole lot, but I want to show you what that looks like. And then I click on Submit. It's cutting our DNA, and there's our picture. There's three different open reading frames on this uh, plasmid. The first one here, C, it makes a protein called glutathione S transferase. That's the gene we're going to use to make a fusion protein. And at the C terminus here, you can see all these enzymes, NOT1, EAG1, PAER71, etc. Those are restriction enzymes in the multi-cloning site. The gene B here is beta-lactamase, which is, allows bacteria that have this gene to grow in uh, the antibiotic ampicillin. So we use that as a selectable marker. And A is a repressor called the LAC repressor. It makes a protein that turns off the GST gene. So under normal circumstances, this gene is off. And then when the scientist wants to turn it on, they add a special sugar, which is called IPTG. And that sugar binds to the repressor, and that is tr removes the negative regulation, so the gene turns on. And so you can turn this gene off and on just by adding sugar to the bacteria. I'm going to linearize the DNA so that we can zoom in. So this is the same DNA and now it's just been linearized. Here's GST. I'm going to make two X's on the uh, linear ruler here on either side of the multi-cloning site with all these different enzymes. Okay, And then click down here on zoom in. This is showing us the C terminus of the GST protein and all the restriction sites in a row. Um, it starts off with the, the BAMH1, ECAR1, ECMO1, etc., and works its way all the way through the different enzymes. If I click again here and just pass that, I want to show you the uh, stop code on. You can zoom all the way in. I know this looks like a big mess, but you can see all the enzymes now. But you can zoom all the way in to see the stop codon. That's here at the C terminus. You see the TGA that's highlighted here? That's the UGA on the mRNA that serves as a stop codon. So that's the very end of the protein. So naturally then, if we clone into this gene, we have to clone before the stop codon. So we have to clone to the left here. If you clone to the right, then the cell will make the GST protein stop at the stop codon and never make your protein. That, For that reason, then, we're going to use one of the multi-cloning site restriction enzymes. However, you could use any of these enzymes that are found in here uh, if you wanted. Some of them, though, are not unique cutters, like the one I just happened to land on here, ACI1. It cuts the DNA in 58 sites. That's no good. You need a restriction site that only cuts the DNA in this one site. And so here's XHO1. See, it only cuts at one site there. All right, so we have, um, if I un go back to the main display and sort of unzoom all of this, 
I want to click and find these enzymes in my DNA of choice because this is where we're going to clone. To do that, I went back to NCBI and I'm going to analyze the human PLC gamma 1 gene, the one we've been playing with for the whole semester, to see if it has any of these restriction sites that would allow me to clone that a piece into the proper place on the PGEX plasmid. And so the session number is here. And then we'll go to Neb Cutter. Actually, I'm back to the original. Put in the restriction si or the accession number here. It's a linear piece of DNA, so just click on Submit. Now we've analyzed our DNA for its restriction enzymes. And I know we've been through this before, so I'm going to skip to the part that you use for cloning. You come here to Custom Digest. And you scroll through to see if any of that list of enzymes from the PGEX vector will also cut here. So the first one on that list, I know you guys don't remember, but I'll read them off, is BAMH1. And here it cuts in the PLC gamma, so that's good. The next one is ECO R1. Now let's go and zoom down. So ECO R1 does not cut, so we check that off the list. The next one is TSP M1, and it cuts our DNA, but notice it cuts it twice. So we might be interested in that. We'll come back to that. Same thing for eczema right here, XMA1. It cuts twice. XHO1 is one we might be interested in. It cuts only one time. Um, what is small one is an enzyme that cuts our, our PLC gamma DNA twice, but it only cuts our plasmid once. So that could be useful. SAL, SAL1 is uh, not here. So that doesn't is not necessary. Let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. ACC1 is one that might be useful. That cuts in the plasmid. So I'm just going off the list of the ones I remember. EAG1. Do we look for that one already? Nope. There it is. It also cuts twice. So that might be useful. Uh, there's one called PAER71. There it is. So we have a lot to choose from. Um, and then PSPX1 also cuts in the plasmid. And then you go, after you've chosen your enzymes, you click on Digest. And that shows you where all these guys cut. So for ex some of them cut once, some of them cut twice. So here's EAG1. You see it cuts at 419, but it also cuts here at 848. And so if you use this enzyme, you would cut out this little piece of PLC gamma 1. That might be useful for you. I don't know. If you chose small one, notice it cuts here at number 77. and also cuts way back here. So you could cut out almost the entire gene. That could be really useful. Now what we, we'll look at these because eczema 1, small 1, TSP1 have a... Uh, a special relationship with each other. You see small one recognizes the sequence CCC GGG. TSP1 also recognizes CCC GGG. Exma 1 also recognizes CCC GGG. So we should talk about those. Um, there's PAER71, um, PSPX1, they recognize at the same site here, um, and XHO1. They only cut one time, though. There's no corresponding partner. So if you wanted to cut out a piece of DNA, you'd have to choose this enzyme and then maybe another one, like BAMH1, a different enzyme. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, let's look again quickly at the Neb Cutter analysis of the plasmid. Make it linear again and zoom in just so we can look at it. So if we cut with this small one, the CCCGGG, we can clone into this one site here. And that's probably what I'm going to do right now to show you how to do that. That's the easiest thing to do. And uh, it'll put our DNA right here at the end of the GST protein. If I come back to the PLC gamma, and there's small one, I'm going to click on that. 
so we can look in more detail at how the enzyme cuts. So small one cuts the DNA at CCCGGG and it cuts it right in the middle. So we'll open the DNA up as a blunt uh, cutter. Remember that I'd mentioned ExMA1 and TSPM1 also cut CCCGGG, but look, they cut it at a different, um, in a different way. They don't cut it right in the middle. Instead, they cut it asymmetrically. And so if they cut here and here, it would generate pieces of DNA with a 5' prime overhang. So TSPM1 and XMA1 are neoschismers of small one. Uh, TO TSPM1 and XMA1 are um, isoschismers of each other. It means they cut the same sequence at the same spot. Okay, that was from last week's homework. You probably figured that out already by yourselves. So let's choose small one, and it's going to cut the DNA right there. And that makes it pretty pretty easy. So I'll go back to the main display. What do we do now? Well, we need to get those fragments of DNA and start pretending like we're doing restriction digestion and mix them together and then analyze them. To do that, I'll go back to the PLC gamma. I'm going to copy the entire RNA and then paste it into a Word file. So there it is. And then I know that the enzyme are the, the font courier, C O U R E uh, R I E R. Where is it? C O U. Sorry. There. Is at the font 10. Will show us our, our DNA in the best light because each letter is exactly the same size in courier. And so it lines them up nice and tight. So there's our PLC gamma. Um, FASTA sequence. So number one here is, this is our target DNA uh, human PLC gamma 1. Now I need to find the restriction site for small 1. Remember there was two of them and uh, I use the find function of Microsoft Word so that we can search within the sequence so let's search for and find the restriction site. The restriction site is CCCGGG. So now I search for them. There's one. So there's the first CCCGGG. I'm going to highlight it. And I like to actually change the color. So I'm going to highlight it with green. Okay, now we need to go down to the next one. So we found the CCCGGG again. And there's the second one down here at the end of the sequence. So all I've done so far is find the two restriction sites. Let me zoom out a little so you can see them together. There's one at the top, and then here's the other at the bottom. So that's a big piece of DNA that could be cut out by this restriction enzyme. Let me save this. Okay. Now the next thing that we need to do is go back to the uh, NCBI and get the PLC, I mean the... Um, cloning vector sequence. So we're going to start off with PJEC6P1 and clone into that vector. So we want to do the same thing, copy and paste the FASTA sequence into our Word file so that we can mix the DNAs together. So here we are, number two, and then the cloning vector PJEC6P1. And what did I do wrong? There should oh, there shouldn't be all those numbers. So let me. Okay, I have to do it again. Just give me a second here. There. 
I, I had numbered all the individual lines. So there's the cloning vector. It, it looks a little messy now, so I'm going to change it to courier and uh, 10, size 10 font, and that will clean it up a little bit. And then what do we need to do? We need to find the small one site, which is CCC G G G. And there it is in PGEX. So I'm going to highlight it. Rather than make it green, I'm going to make it pink so that we can see what happens next. There we go. So we found the small one site in our plasmid right there. And up here we found our two restriction sites in our target DNA. And if we took these in real life in a lab and had the DNA in a tube and we added the restriction enzymes, it would cut between the C and the G. So here I'm pretending that that cut there. Oops. And it also cuts there. So it would separate our DNA into three pieces. I'm going to take the middle piece that's cut out right there. And that is what I would call a small one fragment. And then I would co I'm going to copy it and paste it right in the middle of the CCG small one site of the PGEX. And then if we want it, I can go through and clean up. I'm not going to take your time to do that right now because it doesn't absolute matter for what we need to do next. So let me scroll down so you can see. Okay, it's a big piece. So it's harder to deal with. But you see, if I zoom in a little bit up here, now we've there's CCC G G G. So we have restored that restriction site, but the pink part comes from the vector. The green part comes from the PLC gamma. This is the top part. If I scroll down through the DNA, there we go. There's the other small one site at the end with the CCC from the PLC gamma and the GGG from the vector. We need to analyze this DNA sequence to see if it makes a fusion protein. And a fusion protein would be one continuous protein if you put this into bacteria. And this is how people make fusion proteins, like a GST fusion protein or a um, GFP protein, which we'll do later in the semester. So I'm going to copy this whole DNA, which I am hoping is a fusion protein between GST from the vector and PLC gamma, the small one fragment. I copied it. We're going to go back to the internet and I am going to search under NCBI for BLAST. So if you go back to the NCBI homepage, on the right hand side here is BLAST. We're going to do a different kind of BLAST we haven't done yet. And this one's called BLAST X. BLAST X will take an RNA sequence or a DNA sequence and search a protein database. And it translates the nucleic acid on the fly. So now I've pasted just the nucleotide sequence. Actually, in this case, I don't use the whole FASTA sequence. I just use the nucleotide sequence, although you could use the FASTA sequence. Then we don't need to change anything. We're going to search the non-redundant protein sequence database by BLAST. And I'm going to click on BLAST, and we'll let uh, the Internet do its thing and wait for results. Okay, I'd pause the lecture and now I'm back. The search was taking a long time, so you didn't want to have to sit through that. Um, here's it, um, the results where it has identified the different domains in our fusion protein, and it turns out we have not made it yet. Um, let's analyze these results. What this shows us is, are the domains that were identified in the sequence that we submitted. Um, it shows all three forward frames of, of transcription and translation. So here, RF number one, so that stands for reading frame number one. <clears throat> In reading frame number one is the PLC gamma, a small one fragment. And you can see the different domains from the PLC gamma one protein. So it's in there, but it's in a different frame than the GST. 
you have to go all the way down to the bottom and in frame 3 GST you can see it here there's a big empty space that's where the PLC gamma is located but it's out of frame so the proteins would not be made together and then in the far right since I've copied the whole sequence you can see the beta lactamase and also the LAC inhibitor okay that means we have to go back to the drawing board and um, capture a different uh, plasmid so PF uh, PJEC 6P1 is not the appropriate plasmid for this DNA instead we're, at, we're in frame 3 so I'm gonna move to PJEC 6P3 so here we are back to the PJEC sequences I'm gonna grab the fastest sequence for PJEC 6P3 right here take it to Microsoft Word and I think you know what to do right so that was so now we need to move down here and I'm gonna paste PJEC 6P3 make it size 10 font so it's easier to work with and then find the CCC GGG site within PGX3 and there it is now we, we've used pink and green let's try a different color we used a beautiful pretty blue color here actually I can probably just go back I'm gonna go back up to the PLC gamma sequence and this is the small one fragment from this GGG I'm gonna highlight it to the CCC right here copy it come back down to PJEC 6P3 paste it in there now what do we do well we take this DNA sequence which we just made we copy it we go back to blast X so here's the blast home page I want blast X remember paste my brand new DNA sequence in there and then click on blast this can sometimes take a little bit longer because it has to translate it first and then search the protein database and so there the search has begun. I'm going to pause again and then I'll be back when the results are ready to to look at. Okay, I'm back. So we have enough to talk about here. The complete results aren't back, but at least the domain analysis has been done. Now, you see what how it's different in um, number the first frame here, reading frame number 1. This is where in the last one we saw the PLC gamma domains, but now because we cloned into PGX3 it has shifted them and now they show up down here look at the bottom so this means we have successfully found or created theoretically um, the a GST right here glutathione S transferase PLC gamma fusion protein um, now when you put this DNA back into the bacteria and you added the sugar it would make the GST protein but then move seamlessly into also making the PLC gamma proteins so that's pretty darn neat also notice that because we use the different vector it has shifted the beta lactamase and the lac uh, I repressor uh, out of frame from the GST whereas in PGX1 they're in the same frame so that changes several things that doesn't matter because those don't have to get made as a fusion protein each one of those has their own promoter but it does matter that PLC gamma is in frame with GST because uh, it will not have its own promoter it has to get made as a fusion protein with the GST protein okay so that's subcloning by restriction analysis hopefully you enjoyed it I think it's a pretty fun puzzle um, I want you guys, you'll use this as uh, to help you, uh, this lecture, and then I'll put another homework online for you to have your own uh, subcloning puzzle.